Good morning. It is so good to have you all here this morning, those who are worshiping with us here in person and those who are joining us on Facebook Live. I'm certainly glad to be with you as we gather to worship our God. A couple of announcements, reminders. Um, first of all, um, you may be wondering why we've asked people to wear an, something orange or at least a, an orange carnation and we have an orange banner in our sanctuary. Um, that is being done to support and show solidarity with uh, the American Indian Alaska Native Lutheran Association, honoring and remembering the children of the First Nations people whose remains were discovered in a mass grave recently. There, they found over 215 children who were part of the Kamloops Residential School, who were all, they were part of the Rosebud Sioux Native uh, community. So we are doing that. We won't wear orange carnations every week, but we will have the banner up here for 225 days uh, starting today. Um, so we do appreciate you wearing the carnation that we've uh, provided in solidarity with our native uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, sad news, um, if you've not read the paper yet this morning, uh, we discovered that Urshel Schmidt, one of our longtime members, has passed away. She passed away on Friday. Her services will be held on Thursday. Uh, viewing will start at 5. The service, uh, according to the paper, will start at 7 o'clock in the evening at Duska's Funeral Home on Buffalo Road. We continue our Bible study of significant women of the Bible. Actually, this Wednesday will be our last one. Um, and then we're going to take a break until January. So um, if you've been dying to be part of a Bible study, this is your chance for the fall. <laughs> one last chance, uh, at least with us. Um, we also have a reminder for our All Saints Remembrance, uh, you should have received either an email or regular mail the invitation to submit names of, love, of the loved ones who have passed uh, to be included on All Saints Sunday uh, in our prayers. Our fall congregational meeting will be held October 31st in Fellowship Hall and on Zoom. You are asked to sign up to let us know whether you will be in person or on Zoom so that we can make sure that you are contacted if you're on Zoom and have the, the link. And also we are providing lunch for those who are going to be in person, so we need a head count for lunch. And last but not least, uh, we have the... Um, Trunk or treat collection of, of candy. If you uh, forgot to bring it today, you still can bring it uh, to the church office by Wednesday. Um, and it would be greatly appreciated. And now I ask us to prepare our hearts for worship. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as yourself. Amen. Receive with glad hearts 
the forgiveness of all your sins by the gift of grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Beckoning God in the stillness of the night, you called Samuel into your service. Call us into service with a voice we are able to hear and give us hearts to come when we are called. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel, beginning at the third chapter. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. Obviously, we didn't have internet. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight has begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again in a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling us before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it, tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I'm about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Perseba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, place your words upon my lips and in my heart that I may proclaim your truth. What does it mean to be called by God? Is it something that happens only to a few? Or is it part of our lives as Christians? 
the lesson today from 1 Samuel focuses us on the call of God and helps us to understand God's call on our own lives. Set early in the life of the nation Israel, the narrative of the calling of Samuel is replete with irony and foreshadowing. The irony is bitter. Samuel thinks the voice calling him in the night belongs to Eli. But the voice belongs to Yahweh. And the message is against Eli and his house. The oracle of doom for the house of Eli foreshadows the oracles Samuel delivers over the course of his life. A prophet's call tends to set the tone for the prophet's career. And Samuel's call is no exception. As the first prophet of ancient Israel in the period of the monarchy, Samuel exposes the threat of monarchs who are concerned with their own security and wealth rather than the well-being of their people. He calls out against ruling families throughout his career, foretelling not only the end of the leadership of Eli and his sons, but also the end of Saul's kingship in 1 Samuel 13. Indeed, even in death, he refused to give any satisfaction to a desperate Saul. In today's text, we see Samuel lives in a precarious time when the word of the Lord was rare. This situation continues the problem from the end of Judges where all the people did what was right in their own eyes. Indeed, in 1 Samuel 2, it speaks of how Eli's sons did what was right in their own eyes, in their work as priests. The times are as dark as the night that falls at the beginning of the story. The boy Samuel is bedded down in the temple with the Ark of the Covenant while Eli slept in another room. Samuel hears a voice calling and three times arises and goes to Eli to ask what he wants. Meanwhile, we know that it is God calling Samuel, but Samuel does not. Even Eli does not understand what is happening right away. Eventually, however, Eli tells Samuel to speak to the Lord. The lectionary reading ends at verse 10 with Samuel doing as Eli told him. Eli anticipates the content of the message Samuel received, which is not surprising in light of 1 Samuel 2, 27-36, which describes a similar oracle against Eli's house by an unnamed prophet, when he urges Samuel not to withhold any part of it from him and then accepts the hard word against him and his, he and his family with the words, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Eli's eyesight might be failing, but his insight is sharp. And he responds to the oracle of judgment with dignity and humility. In light of the very positive relationship that Samuel and Eli share, it is interesting that the reason for the judgment of Eli's house is the relationship between Eli and his own sons. Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli, are blaspheming God by eating the choicest parts of the sacrificial animals, the parts that are to be given to God. 
and Eli has failed to refrain them. Even when confronted by those who are offering the sacrifice, the sons of Eli refuse to give the fatty parts of the animal to Yahweh. Their appetites lead them to abusing their power, to give insult to Yahweh, and to put their own desires above the needs of the people they serve. The tendency of the powerful to take advantage of the vulnerable is a chief concern of Samuel's. When the people cry out for a king in 1 Samuel 8, Samuel warns them against kings who seek after their own good more than the collective good of their people. A king will take the best from his people and use it for his own betterment. The ideal ruler of the people seeks only the good of the people and reflects the concern of Yahweh for the poor and the powerless. While Samuel preached against a form of government that is less common in our day, his message is still sadly pertinent. The poor and the powerless are still at the mercy of the strong. Human appetite still destroys lives and livelihoods. The task of the church is twofold. First, to cry out against injustice and the abuse of power in the world. And second, to hear and respond with humility to the message of judgment that challenges our own practices. There are some who would argue that the statement of 1 Samuel 3.1 regarding the rarity of visions in the time of Samuel applies to our own time. There are many voices competing for our attention. And how many of us can say that we really know God well enough to recognize a word as being from God or from someone else? There is one thing we can know, however. The overwhelming witness of the prophets is that God has no tolerance for those who prey on the weak, who abuse their power, or who eat their fill while others go hungry. Perhaps the difficulty of this message is how easily it can apply to us. Are we in the position of Eli? Or worse yet, his sons, eating our fill and denying both God and our neighbors their share? Are we participating in the abuse of power against the poor and the downtrodden? We, as the church, need to be more like Eli in, re in encouraging everyone to hear the voice that, God, that calls them forth into all they are created to be. At the same time, we also need to be more like the prophet Samuel, willing to challenge, challenge those in the community who are abusing the power with which they were entrusted in order to lift up the lowly and the downtrodden. We need to help each other to tell the truth, even when the truth is hard for us to hear or to say. And the people of God said,
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of God, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. For the gift of the church handed down through the ages and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms and equip them with your gifts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. great. For the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, provide healing for the earth so all living things flourish as you intend. Hear us, O God. Hear your mercy is great. For all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness. Create places of refuge for all your people. Hear us, O God. Hear our prayer. We confess, repent, and reject the times when we as a church and as individuals have been silent in the face of racial injustice. Heal the hearts of those affected by racism in our community and worldwide. Hear us, O God. Hear our Compassionate Father, we pray for those who are struggling with any kind of illness or disease, especially Bishop Michael Lozano, those on our prayer list, and those we now name in your presence. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days ahead. Hear us, O oh God. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful ancestors in every age whose lives have pointed us toward you, especially Elizabeth Smith, Emma Rushton, Mabel Butt, and Henry Hank Masiolik. May we be reunited with one another in the last days. Hear us, O oh God. Hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the world and for the safety of all military personnel, especially those who have congregational ties. Hear us, O God. Hear our prayer. O God, confident that you hear us, 
we boldly take, place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. The Lord keep you with you always. And of the Lord keep you with you. right on 
our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Thank you. 